one. He has risen. He has risen indeed. Hallelujah. Happy Easter on this 2020 when we are unfortunately experiencing the coronavirus quarantine, but hopefully that will soon be over. Grace, peace, and mercy to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I, I'm a Midwestern kid. I grew up in uh, southern Indiana. I like to describe myself as growing up into the land of Camaros, corn, and, and classic rock and roll. And because of classic rock and roll, I have to share with you one of my favorite artists. He's by a guy by the name of Bob Seger. He's from uh, Michigan. And I was listening to him in the late 70s into the, the 1980s. Bob Seger's an interesting character. Uh, he was single for a very, very long time and toured. But at the height of his popularity, he married and had some young children and, and took early retirement because he wanted to be present for the raising of his children. But it's only been recently that he began to uh, tour again because there were so many people that said, we want to hear the music one last time. We want to see you one last time. He even had members of his band that said, you know, we're the reason that we have, the, you're the reason we have an opportunity to play music. There was so much pressure for him to come back that about 10 years ago, he came back and, and began to tour. And, and a lot of people said he sounded better than ever. I was watching him in an interview and he said, it took a little time for the, the old magic to come back. But before you know it, he said, it's like riding a bicycle. And before you know it, you're right back into it even after a 20-year gap. On this uh, Easter Sunday, I want to talk about comebacks. I want to talk about things that bring hope back into our life. Let me, though, begin by reading here from John chapter 20, uh, verse, starting with verse 10. It says, Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Here ends our reading. Thanks be to God. Tragedy. Emotions. Difficulties. Uncertainty. Questions. What's going to happen next? These are all part of the condition of life. Mary Magdalene is going through those very emotions that we all experience during difficulties. The one that she had hoped for and hoped in had been put to death. Jesus, who was her rabbi or her teacher, had been crucified. And now they have placed his body into a tomb. After Sabbath has concluded, she goes to get the body to make sure that it is properly anointed. The disciples go back to their homes, but Mary stays. And I love this about Mary. Mary stays, brokenhearted, crying, but she stays. And then she sees two angels, and she has questions. But notice how she doesn't recognize that Jesus has been resurrected because she doesn't see the hope yet. She's still stuck in tragedy. There's many people in life that, that when tragedy comes, that they become like one note, that the, the tragedy becomes everything that they're about. And there's some people that are, that are still living their adult lives, uh, blaming the, their childhood for why they can't succeed in life. There, there are some people that, 
that even as they've gotten older, that, that aches and pains come along, but they somehow wish they were still 25 in, in perfect physical condition. Life changes. As I, as I said on Good Friday, tragedy happens. But tragedy and triumph, difficulties and hope are interconnected because whenever we go through a Good Friday, there's always an Easter Sunday on the back end. With Jesus' death is his resurrection. With his suffering is hope. With his scourging is hope for us that he understands what we go through. How powerful it is that we have a Messiah who understands life in its fullness. Mary is, is completely broken hearted and she has enormous questions. I like how the fact that Jesus asked questions back to her. Who is it that you're looking for? Why are you crying? As we have a, a nation in quarantine, the, the news cycle is filled with constant doom and gloom. And I, and I understand that. I get that, that we're going through. We're still experiencing the difficulties of the coronavirus hitting our nation and hitting the entire world. But, but eventually, eventually, businesses are going to open back up. Eventually, people will go back to work. Eventually, the church itself will be open again and we will be filled with people who will be worshiping God. But will we be people of Good Friday or will we be people of Easter Sunday? Or will we be people of both? I think the key is to be a people of both, Good Friday and Easter Sunday. But when you're going through the Good Friday, also be a people of resurrection. And that means you're a people of hope. Christians need to understand that resurrection is not just something for the last day. But the concept of resurrection is for every day. But let's put ourselves into the, 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 the feet of Mary here for a moment. Because all of this will go through this at one time. As we're devastated, Jesus says, Why? You're, a Christ. You're a believer in me. Why are you crying? Because I'm broken hearted. I understand. But don't you know that the, that one that was crucified has been resurrected? Don't, don't you understand that eventually there will be hope after the tragedy? Don't you understand that Easter Sunday is coming? Don't you understand that as a people of the resurrection, not only on the last day of our lives, but we can bring the hope of resurrection, not only to ourselves and our church, but our nation now, that we should be an optimistic people, that we should be a, a people who believe in something greater than ourselves. I mean, eventually, will another tragedy happen to the world, to the nation? Eventually, yes. We see the cycles go through it with Katrina and 9-11 and the Great Recession. But, but as a believer in Christ, brothers and sisters in Christ, where is your heart? More importantly, where is your hope? I love how Mary cries out. She, she cries out in, in expectation and hope. Roboni, which means teacher. And then she wants to grab on to the hope. She wants to cling to that thing which brings hope. And that hope is Jesus himself. What we need to be clinging to it is not our 401ks. What we need to be clinging, clinging to it is not our jobs. As Christians, what we need to be clinging to is the resurrected Christ. He is our hope this day and every day. Hope is coming. Hope, hope is on the way. I am an optimistic person that I know that eventually this nation is going to open back up. But I hope that on this Easter Sunday, that even though we might not be here physically in church, that we are still a people of the Easter Sunday. Whether you're in church or out of church, you are still a resurrected people. For Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah.